Hey, Geek Out SA. This is Colleen here at our Gen Con Special Edition. I'm here with Dan. Hi, nice Hi, to Colleen. see you, Dan. Hi, Colleen. How are you? Good. Dan is with R&R &R Games, and he's actually going to show us some of his great family games. One of the reasons we came to interview games is you guys hear me talking all the time on the show about bringing families together and gaming, and I think that's something that you guys think is important, too. It is. It's one of our mainstays of our, our premise of our company. Yeah. So they have a lot of really great games that you can play with your family. Um, First, they're going to tell us something about. <laughs> Attention, Attention, geek out fans! Geek out I'm going to talk about some of our new games. Gen Con's doing stuff. Okay, um, I wanted to bring up this one really fast. Hearts of Attraction. I, I adore this game. These are magnets, um, heart shaped. We played Attraction um, at Texacon, so shout out to Texacon and at the DFW Nerd Night charity event. This is a new spin on it where it's a little heart. So yeah. you're actually trying to get the magnets close. To make, to make a cluster. Right. So that you can score that cluster, and then I would take that and I would score these two hearts. So you're trying to get them close enough that they attract. So this is, I'm a science teacher, you guys all know this. So this is great. When I used to teach fifth grade science, this would be a great way to show magnetism because that's one of the things in Absolutely. Texas they have to know in fifth grade. So this, I think, is a really great, fun way to use a game in the classroom. What's some other ones that you have for us, Dan? All right. Well, Colleen, I'm excited to be here with you on Geek Out. Well, thank I'm you. I'm going to have you just look at a couple of our new games. So this is Face Chase. This will be available on August 20th here in the U.S. Um, this is a really fast and frantic game where you're trying to get rid of, to be the first person to get rid of all the cards in your hand. And the cards have pictures of faces. And you're looking for four parts, the eyes, the hairs, the nose, and the mouth. If you can make them match... If you can make them match, um, then you swipe all the cards off the board, and you keep going with a new random card until you uh, are the first person that gets rid of all the cards in your hand. So this is a great one for um, this is a great for uh, K through second um, when you're trying to teach them emotions. You're also trying to teach them colors um, so they can learn. You know, they have blonde hair, brown hair, black right. hair. So this is a great um, elementary type game for the elementary kids right. to learn skills. So one of the keys in all of our games here, uh, Colleen, is that we want our games to be fun for everybody, but we want to keep everybody's interest. So even though this is looking like a kid's game, I guarantee you moms and dads are going to love this game and want to keep playing it time and time again. Oh, yeah, that looks like a lot of fun for the family. So then we have Slideways. We came out with Slideways in February. This is tic-tac-toe on steroids. Nice. You can either flip over one of these little beacons here, or you can move the bar left and right one space, okay? So here, let me take this out of the box, and I'll show you real quickly. Slideways just won the Travel Game of the Year Award from Women's Day Magazine. Oh, so this would be a great way for the kids to play something in the back seat of the car without having to be on their technology all the time because we've just heard how much we need to keep our kids limited in their technology. So this is a great travel game that they could have between them. Absolutely. It takes about five minutes to play the game, and you're either going to flip one of these to your color or you can move one of the bars left and right one space. And do you have to get four in a row? You have to get four in a, four row, in a row, up and down, side to side, or even diagonally. Oh, great. Okay. So fun little travel game. Retails for $15. And it's a good way to use math words with your kids, too, talking about diagonally and parallel. Absolutely. Um, so that's awesome. So then here we have Panda Head. Panda Head is one of our new releases hey, that's going to be out again on day. August this 20th. It's a fast-paced uh, card um, trick-taking so game. Learn, you know, the object hair, is, is don't take hair. the seventh trick. Every seventh trick will score points. If you go over 21, you're going to become a tired panda, and you're going to take the lowest score of whoever's around the table. But if you go over 21 a second time, you're a pooped panda, and you're out of the game. Poor panda. Poor panda. <laughs> Last panda standing wins in nice. that game. <laughs> then we have flipping flags. Flipping flags, I'm going to show you in a minute. We're going to, you and I are going to play a quick round. Yeah. But here I want to talk about caffeine rush. This one looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I know a lot of you Geek Out SA people have caffeine problems. Um, so this is a good game to play. Um, I also wanted to show, because I looked through some of these cards earlier, you get to have a cup of coffee, and there's a name of, you know, like you're the barista at Starbucks, so it's the name. I'm going to get to try to fill Gandalf's order or Yoda's order. So, you know, already that's very geeky, and I'm very excited about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So the game's real simple. Everyone's going to get a deck of ingredient cards. The ingredient cards are identical, and when you say go, you're going to start flipping your cards, and you're either going to put them underneath a drink to complete that order, 
or you're going to put it in your workstation. So I'm going as fast as I can, and Colleen's going to be doing the same. And as soon as you complete a drink order, you take the drink and all of the ingredients, and you go, order up. Order up. And you set it aside, and you get a new drink, and you replace it, and you go, I got a thick Easter bunny, Moco, and you keep going. So you keep going until all the drinks have been completed, and whoever is the barista that completed the most drinks wins the game, Caffeine Rush. It looks like a lot of fun, so I'm excited to play it here with Dan. So we're going to play around just so that you guys see. And I just wanted to show you there's a cute little reference card so that you know really quickly off the bat what the ingredients are. Um, so Dan and I are going to play around. So I'm going to try to fill the skinny vegan chai for Gandalf. Huh? Oops. <laughs> So I got skinny vegan uh, chai for Gandalf, and I got sweet vegan cocoa lava for Yoda. Why do I have all these vegan drinks? I'm from Texas. It's crazy. Well, we, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> vegan mocha drinks there that are is. going around now. All, all right. right. Are we ready? I'm ready. One, two, three, go. Okay. I have tea. I have sweetener. I have more sweetener. I don't need that. Ah. I have, what is this one? I don't know. Oh, I have soy. Okay. Order up. Order up for Gandalf. Now, I have Skinny Thick Choco Blast for Bueller. Order up. Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> I got a Bird's Box and Beans coffee bean. Okay, I have chocolate. Oh, I'm going to put that. I want to get Bueller. Steam. Oh, I need steam for Bueller. Do I need milk? Uh, cream. Does this count as milk? Uh, yeah. Oh, my cow has to be fatter to be cream. Oh, no. Order up. Oh, oh, I got to be faster. Oh. This is milk. Oh, no. So much chocolate. I got a first in cocoa. <laughs> so that's the game. So that's so it. We so we would continue <laughs> playing this game until all the drinks are gone. Whoever makes the most wins. And, that, and you can see as you get used to the references and it gets in your head what those are, you're going to be going really fast and trying to plow through those I, games. I, Colleen, I do have a bit of advantage over you. I've only played this like about six to seven hundred times. Yeah, just a few times yeah. as you play test. So, <laughs> well, that is a really great, really fun game. I really love the concept. I like that you have to, you know, yell during the game, order up, yeah. and, and you're interacting yeah. that way. So, um, that's a lot of fun. I right. really enjoy that one. So, let's end this little section with a, a fast-paced game. Of Flipping Flags. Okay, yeah, I wanted to check out Flipping Flags. I think this is going to be good for some of my history friends. Um, these have flags of all the different countries. So it is a good way to, not necessarily that the students have to know what the countries are, but that they know um, names of countries, not necessarily that they know the flags. And this is also a good matching game for the, for the younger kids, too. So, you know, a lot of adults don't know the flags of different countries. That okay? is very true. And this is a fun way to learn about it. Because what we're going to do is I'm going to flip a card, and then Colleen's going to flip a card. And then I'm going to flip a card. We're going to go back and forth. But the first person that sees a match has to yell out the, the, the country that they see. Be careful, though, because some of these flags look pretty similar. Uh -huh. And you might be surprised. <laughs> so here we go. All right, a here we go. A game of flipping flags. I'll go first. All right. South Africa. All right. So I got South Africa and South Africa. So you can see there's three flags on each card. You d they don't have to necessarily be in the same slot nope. to match, just as long as they match. So then I get this match. So it's your okay. turn to flip. Boy, and there's a lot to look at. Kenya. There you go. Obviously, Colleen's had more coffee than <laughs> me this morning. Yeah, I think you need some more coffee, Dan. I do. I do. <laughs> It's a lot to look at, Norway. but it's great. Norway, I saw that. Great, good job. Um, and this is a nice way to do some competitive gaming, teach your kids Japan. How to tell each other good job when they find a match. Um, Portugal. Yeah, all right. Ah. <laughs> Sweden. Yep. Now see, now Dan's catching up to me. He's going to beat me here. I keep looking for the U.S. Is that bad? I'm like, where's the U.S.? Where's the U.S.? <laughs> I was like, I thought I saw Jamaica. I no. thought I saw something, too. <laughs> uh -oh. uh. Finland. I was like, where's Finland? I know it's somewhere. I'm tired. <laughs> China. Yeah. Oh, Taiwan. Oh, 
Oh yeah, it's been, it was that's, out there no, all that's along. been sitting there all yeah. along. Yeah, we didn't even see it. <laughs> U.S. No, oh, oh, you already took it. No. <laughs> U.S. U.S. Yes. Oh, no, he got it. So that's flipping flags. So that's really great. So if you have kids that like finish their work early and they need something to do, this is a great way to like keep their minds right. going and Absolutely. playing a game and they're having fun. Yeah. So. I really love all this. Do you want to tell us about Hanabi real quick? I know. Well, I mean, uh, Hanabi is, is one of our top selling games. Hanabi won the Spiel de Yaris in 2013. <coughs> it's a card playing game where you're trying to make fireworks displays. So nice. what we did is we came out uh, last year with the deluxe version. So instead of holding cards, these are mahjong tiles. Oh, fun. And you have them in front of you. So you play it just like the card game. But it's it, I personally prefer playing with the tiles because, you know, you. You get my age, you kind of have to move your cards around, you start forgetting things. So right. <laughs> this is a little bit easier. It makes it easier on the older folks like myself. So. You know, and who doesn't want to make fireworks? I mean, right. really, you know? That's right. It's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so it comes in this nice little gift box here like that. And you can see that the tiles, we made them double-sided. For those of you that are familiar with the European version, um, the back sides were black. So it kind of, it was difficult to focus on what you were playing with. So we put a nice design on them. But these are the actual tiles here with nice bright designs. So it makes it easier to see and play. This is one of my all-time favorite games. I love playing Hanabi. That's great. That looks like a lot of fun. So where, where can people come in Gen Con? Because we're going to post this video so that people can come and find you. Yeah, so absolutely. So where, where are you guys located and I, how can I'm they right come? right here, and, Colleen. You're right here. I'm I right found here. you, Dan. So just come and find me right here. <laughs> I'm here on booth 350. 350. I'm here all week. Yep, um, you can see the big, um, if you come down the hallway where um, Aiello is and you just make uh, left, you're right here, 350, you'll see R&R &R Games Incorporated. Come out here and play some of these really great games with your friends. Well, more and importantly, we're the place that has the train whistles. Oh, no, don't do that. Don't, no, that's not okay. <laughs> hey, I actually need that in the crowd I earlier. These, I brought these for all your students. Oh, no, sir. <laughs> oh, yeah, those are going with me to the classroom. Uh huh. I'm going to use one when I'm trying to walk through all the people through here when I was trying to get back to your booth. Well, it was great to meet oh, you, it was Dan. A pleasure. Thank you so much for being on the show. Listen, I want to encourage your fans to come by and visit us. So anyone who comes and tells us that they're one of your followers, they get an additional 10% off any purchase from us at Gen Con. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So come out here to Gen Con, booth 350. Come to R&R, &R, play games with your families, and geek out, San Antonio.